In the first weekend in May, Jackson, Mississippi played host to a landmark conference. Called Jackson Rising, the three-day event attracted activists and entrepreneurs from around the region and the world interested in building economic power in low-income communities. The conference was conceived as part of late Mayor Shokwe Lumumba's plan to develop Mississippi's aging capital from the bottom up through what he called solidarity economics. But Jackson isn't the only city experiencing a grave wealth gap these days. How might worker-owned co-ops help build strong local economies that are good for everyone? Thanks to support from our viewers, Grid TV was able to attend Jackson Rising with TESSA, the toolbox for education and social action. Here's some of what we heard. Jackson Rising is, uh, I almost say, unfortunately unique because the, the thing that is happening in Jackson is so exciting. And the idea that you are, you're getting so many people from cross sector to really take control and say, this is our community, these are our lives, this is our economy, we are going to, to raise Jackson. The main thing that, that people are straight up just interested in, minus all the other abstract stuff, job. I need a job, I need a stable job, I need health care, I need child care, and I need it at a rate that's affordable. If we can work together to figure that out, I'm all in. There's all these different formations that are trying to figure out how we start. And so the Seven Grassroots Economies Project is one of them. And that formation was born out of some work that happened at the U.S. Social Forum um, in Atlanta, Georgia in 07. And then there was a gathering held at Highlander, um, trying to bring people together who were doing work around economic alternatives. Um, and so that work really helped catapulted us to think about what is cooperative economics look like in the South and who's all doing that and how do we make sure that groups that are normally marginalized out of the conversation are in. First of all, a co-op, and I want to say this as strongly as possible, is a very competitive business. It is not kumbaya land. It is not committee land. It is not out there in some fantasy economy. It's in the real economy. It's lean without being mean. What co-ops do is they allow everybody to participate in the decision-making process, but you still respect the functional, uh, functional roles within a business. And I think the last part of really workplace democracy is actually open sharing of information and education, which is a co-op principle that is incredibly important because if you don't have access to the information um, about how the business is doing financially and, and the training to understand how the business is working, is this actually what works in the, our enterprise? Is this is what works in our industry? Then the me democracy isn't that meaningful. So the other critical piece is education and inf open information sharing. The people that have come here, not just from Jackson, not just from the South, but across the uh, United States and, and maybe wider, because people want to understand what's going on here, I believe, so they can emulate it in their own communities. Because it's that really that regional uh, development that I think is really important to developing a cooperative economy because it is unique to every location. It is unique to their specific communities. So what are your assets in your community and then how do you educate around that to understand your own cooperative economy? I first learned about cooperatives when I was here in the 1960s um, as a freedom marcher uh, and uh, one thing we came into contact with were the rural cooperatives that black people had uh, relied upon for some of their strength uh, in very difficult times. Uh, I had uh, been a student out in Nebraska uh, at the time, the University of Nebraska, and uh, I had a connection with the progressive farmers movement out there, so I learned about farmer cooperatives. Picket line, school boy cops. They try to say it's a communist plot, but all I want is equality for my sister, my brother, my people, and me. Demographically, I mean, Jackson is one of the poorest cities in, in, in the United States. Uh, and the poverty concentration is very extreme here. And it's a lot of black and working poor. Uh, and by that, I mean, you know, your average wage is here uh, if you're making $10 an hour in Jackson, you're actually doing good, to, you know, by Jackson standards. Uh, your average wages are probably like eight and below. Jackson's infrastructure is going to have to be entirely overhauled within the next 10 years by a federal mandate. So there's a lot, there's a ton of resources that are going to have to be spent. One has become a political question of who is going to get them, right? So the cooperatives were one of the things that we were strategically looking at when, we, when I was working in the mayor's office of 
how do we make sure that real these jobs go to Jacksonians and not just contracted out to every, you know, any and everybody? The co-ops and, and us being able to facilitate some of that from the, from the city side was the most soundest means that we knew that we can devise and help facilitate producing. It was important for me to come and learn and get inspired uh, because at times if you work in a small corner, you can forget that actually the struggles, the issues, the concerns, the challenges are the same, uh, similar. Of course, there are differences, but for me, uh, I've learned a lot from the, from the Jackson Conference and I, I, I'm inspired because uh, these are people who have not given up hope uh, for what could be a better world, a better society. And that's a message I want to take back home because at times people want to give up because they think they are alone in the world. My goal is still to see how many seeds can we plant so that you can see a complete cultural shift. Because even if we shift the policies, even if we shift and there's more technical assistance and cooperation Jackson happens, if we don't culturally shift and we culturally shift the people's minds to go actually, this is mine then it doesn't matter because then there'll be gains and then there'll be all be rollbacks. So my goal long term is to have a cultural shift from people from an individualistic society to one of saying collective ownership. My goal is to actually have Jackson's risings in all the cities in this region. I think this is a moment that we cannot miss. And that's why it's so important that the labor movement understand that we must organize the South. You see Jackson rising. You see the Moral Monday movement taking off around the South. You see the fast food workers movement spreading around the South. Workers in the South have had enough. They want change. They want hope. They want to believe that things can be different, and they can be if unions make lasting investments in the South. Coming back here to Jackson feels really great and empowering to me. Um, I was born only a few hundred miles from here. And as I said yesterday, I was in another form of a cooperative, but it wasn't my cooperative. And it was called sharecropping. I come from sharecroppers. And we worked someone else's land and, and we did all of this and they got all the profits and they gave us little, little to next of nothing. I mean, even the house that we lived in wasn't our house, it was their house, you know. And so now that I'm back here in the South and now I have my own company and it feels so great. It feels so good.